Hey everybody, Professor Benelou here with the second of two short videos to explain Unit 4 Discussion Board. Okay, so in this video, I will be discussing the topics that you can go over. The first one is Reaganomics, and remember, the primary document is an article with which President Reagan is interviewed regarding his economic policies. When Reagan was sworn into office in January 1981, the economy was still suffering from inflation and slow growth that had plagued both President Ford and President Carter. And basically, the gist of Reaganomics is Reagan wanted to increase the amount of spending money every American had in his or her pocket. And basically, Reagan, the cornerstone of Reaganomics is you cut the taxes for the upper classes and the lower and middle class folks will benefit. So really to gauge whether or not Reaganomics worked, you have to look at how the lower and middle class families fared during his eight years in office. Okay, so Reagan was a huge proponent of smaller government and he felt that the middle class would benefit from more simplified tax codes. He cut about 41 billion from the federal budget, which is a ton, particularly for the early 1980s. Unfortunately, a lot of that money was funds for social programs that people were were, were basically uh, beneficiaries of. Supply-side economics is a big part of Reaganomics. Supply-side economics is the belief that cutting taxes for big businesses will cause the wealth to trickle down to the lower and middle classes. Okay, the Tax Equity and Responsibility Act is basically the topic for the interview with President Reagan that you will be reading and analyzing if you are going to do this topic. This law closed tax loopholes and restricted benefit plans. Oh, excuse me. I can't talk today. Closed tax loopholes and restricted benefits and pension plans. This was absolutely positively Reagan's way of dealing with the growing national debt without raising taxes because conservatives like Reagan do not like taxes. But anyway, Tax Equity and Responsibility Act helped out a little bit, but not as much as had been hoped. Okay, the gap between the rich and the poor grew during Reagan's eight years in office. He did not increase the minimum wage while he was president, and he cut federal funding for firefighters, policemen, and education while he was president. The two groups that were most impacted by Reaganomics were African-American households and single mother households. 1984, he further slashed the tax rates for the wealthy and caused an even larger national debt. And the, the national debt really increased during Reagan's second term in office because he was very focused on spending for the military, funding the military in his Star Wars program. And we're going to get into all that. But anyway, first call four. This primary document is a speech President George H.W. Bush gave to the United Nations General Assembly October 1st, 1990, regarding the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. August 2nd, 1990, Iraqi forces invaded and took over Kuwait. Kuwait has always been an oil-rich nation. President Bush demanded the withdrawal of Iraqi forces. And keep in mind, my dear students, that in the first Gulf War, the United States was head of coalition, United Nations coalition forces. And United Nations coalition forces were based in Saudi Arabia. And the reason why the Saudi Arabian government allowed the country to be a base for United Nations coalition forces is the fact that Saudi Arabia is also a oil rich nation. And the Saudis basically figured, well, what the heck? If the Iraqis are invading and taking over Kuwait, we're probably next. Um, and Saddam Hussein, the dictator of Iraq, dared to invade and take over Kuwait because Iraq had always been an ally of the United States and he felt the United States would not intervene. Well, he miscalculated and we're going to get into that. Coalition forces quickly liberated Kuwait and headed on into Iraq. Even though coalition forces had won the war, Saddam Hussein remains in power. He remained in power until the, the spring of 2003. A lot of folks criticized President George H.W. Bush for allowing Saddam Hussein to remain in power. But think of it this way, my wonderful students. The Middle East has always been a notoriously unstable area of the world. If we had taken Saddam Hussein out of power in 1991, 
it would have caused a power vacuum and caused a very unstable area of the world to keep, become even more so. So anyway, President George H.W. Bush, the primary document again is a speech he gave in front of the United Nations General Assembly October 1st, 1990, which was basically two months after the Iraqi invasion and takeover of Kuwait. In this speech, Bush condemned the Iraqi aggression and called on members of the United Nations to demand a return of Kuwait to the Kuwaitis. He then states that the United Nations can aid nations to band together to prevent aggression and punish those responsible. Okay, so that is the Gulf War topic. The third topic that you can cover is this tear down this wall speech. Very famous speech from Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was known as the great communicator and for a very good reason. He was an incredible speech giver. Remember everybody, he started his career out as an actor. So he came to the American public's attention as an actor. So his training as an actor served him well when giving speeches, absolutely. Okay, so Reagan gave this incredibly famous speech in front of the Berlin Wall in June of 1987. During this speech, he urged the end of the Cold War. And he dreamed, he said, of democracy spreading through the nations that were formerly under communist rule. And he emphasized the hardships that have been endured by Berliners since the wall had been built in 1961. Give you a little background to the end of the Cold War. The dismantling of the wall, or the fall of the Berlin Wall specifically, dismantling the wall began in November 1989 when the East German government collapsed. Remember, East Germany was communist and West Germany was Western backed. Um, the economy in East Germany had been on decline for a little bit. And Soviet Premier Gorbachev had urged the East Germans to impose economic reforms like he had done in the Soviet Union with Glasnost and Perestroika. Many East Germans were flocking to embassies wanting to be let into West Germany. November of 1989, East German leader Eric Honecker resigned and East Germans were let into West Germany. It's interesting because um, you have to look at this speech. A lot of people find it as a defining moment and a lot of people feel it influenced the collapse of the East German government in the fall of the Berlin Wall. What do you think about that? Get into that. Okay, the last topic that you can go over, the primary document is actually a YouTube video of news footage of the stock market crash of 1987. Stock market crash of 1987 occurred on Monday, October 19, 1987. It's known as Black Monday. And during that day, the value of stock, I mean, plummeted a staggering 20%. Chairman of the Federal Reserve on that day, Alan Greenspan, very famous, he tried to slash interest rates to prevent the crash from becoming worse. Before the crash of 1987, the stock market was absolutely booming. Stock market trading via the computer became very popular. Program trading was large volumes of stocks being traded over the computer. State pension funds and large institution funds put in automatic stock orders. The index arbitrage. Traders were using computers to decide when a stock's price would be low enough to make a wise purchase. Because think about it, you still to this day, if you're going to wisely invest in the stock market, you want to buy stocks when the prices are low and then sell when they're high. So anyway, um, before the stock market crash, the interest rates were rising and the U.S. trade deficit was growing. October 18, 1987, investors held off buying stock and this triggered a program trade or automatic buying and selling from large institutions. The sell-off that resulted from this program trade led to the calling in of margin loans. Margin loans are buying on margin is borrowing using stock as collateral. So a margin call is calling in a loan that uses stock as collateral. There was a huge amount of margin calls on that day in October 1987, and this led to few investors to have money to plow back into the market, and this caused the stock market crash. Okay. That is basically what you can delve into in Unit 4 DB. Choose one of these topics. They all have an incredible amount of information out there, research information out there. Choose the one that interests you the most and go for it. And of course, please contact me with absolutely any questions.
All right. Good luck, everybody.